the functional classification of exocrine glands tells us how the secretion happened. So, how the gland released their product. And we have metocrine glands, apocrine glands, and holocrine glands. And their names make sense. Metocrine glands are the most popular one. It's the one that we find in the great majority of our body. Metocrine glands are also called acrine glands. Now, what characterizes a metocrine gland? The metocrine gland is the one that releases the secretion via exocytosis. So, you remember, exocytosis, eccrine gland, which is the same thing as metocrine gland. So, if we go ahead and we draw a gland and we pay attention to how cells in this gland are releasing their secretion, so let's focus on this cell. What we see is that the secretion was produced by the ribosomes associated with the rough ER, right? And then the secretion was put into vesicles by the Golgi complex. And we see the vesicles, and within the vesicles, we find the chemical product that will be released. And what we see is that these vesicles, they keep moving towards the apical surface of the cell, and they end up fusing with the plasma membrane. And when that happens, the chemical product is secreted to the outside. And then this chemical product now here may go through the duct or ducts, depending on the structure of the exocrine gland, and then it reaches its final destination. So all these cells, for example, these cells, these, all these cells are epithelial cells that are forming this exocrine gland. And since these cells release the secretion via exocytosis, this is specifically named an eccrine or merocrine gland. And examples of merocrine glands are the pancreas and also the salivary glands. Now, when we look at apocrine glands, what we see is that in apocrine glands, the apical surface is lost. Apocrine apical surface is lost. So, we see here the same cell we were focusing before, and this is the apical surface, right? And we see that the secretion is going towards the apical surface of the cell. And then what we see is that the apical surface of the cell pinches off and is released. And the remaining of the cell repairs itself and repeats the process. So, if we're looking at this in the gland, what we would see is the secretion close to the apical surface of the cells. And we would see that the apical surface of some cells would be pinching off. And we would also see some cells without their apical surface because they already released it. And a classical example of apocrine gland is the mammary gland. That is the way milk fats are secreted. Now, lastly, we have the holocrine gland. And the holocrine gland is the one that the entire cell is lost for the secretion to be released. Now, the reference that I always like to make to help you to remember that the holocrine gland is the one that the whole thing explodes to release the secretion is that you have holistic medicine. And holistic medicine is the type of medicine that takes into consideration the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. And the holocrine exocrine gland is the one that the whole cell explodes to release the secretion. So, exactly what happens in the holocrine gland is that this gland stores the product in the cytosol. And as the cell matures, it ruptures and it becomes the secretory product. And because the cell ruptures, there is a considerable amount of lipids that is coming from the plasma membrane of the cell and also from the intracellular membranes of the cell. And keeping that in mind helps you to remember that an example of a holocrine gland is the sebaceous gland, sebaceous glands that we find in our skin. So, if I try to draw how this would look like, we would see cells that ruptured 
and then we would have the secretion, right? And we would see secretion inside of cells that are still maturing, and we would also see cells undergoing cell division to replace the lost cell. 